Joe Buck. Hey, is it true that some of these players are talking about a midseason strike? Shh, as commissioner, I'm not really at liberty to discuss that, Joe. But yes, yes, these unions are just going to kill this game dead, Joe Buck. They're going to mo green it right in the eye. Well, I got bigger problems right now, Joe. Beth was supposed to give my introduction speech today, but we're in the middle of little father-daughter spat right now, so I was wondering if maybe you would be willing to be on deck for me. Jim, I'd be honored. Great. And you were right to come to me. I mean, after all, we are best friends. You're definitely not best friends, Jim. No, 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 no. You're not my best friend. But I am definitely your best friend. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, it's one of our favorite shows here on FS1. Brock Meyer and the star of Brock Meyer and many other things, by the way, joining us now at Save at Home, Hank Azaria. Is, yeah, uh... <laughs> what's up, Hank? Hiya, fellas. Oh man, Hank, it is uh, it's great to see you. I wish it was in person, but hey, we all live on computers now, and um, so we just see the clip of <laughs> Joe Buck and. and look, Listen, Joe was awesome in the show. We got to have a little fun at, at our compadre here. Tell us about what it was like working with Joe. Joe's been a friend of the show. Joe goes way back to like 12 years ago when we originally did the short on Funny or Die, a kind of mockumentary about this announcer, Jim Brockmeyer, who had a meltdown on the air. And Joe and Dan Patrick and Rich Eisen all did like sort of commentary as if this was a real event. And it fooled a lot of people. And uh, we noticed that Joe had a, 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 a all those guys are great, but Joe had a particular gift for the dramatic, flair for the dramatic. And we asked him to be a big part of the show, and he, he said yes. And then he was willing to say a lot of dirty things. So then he became a real <laughs> friend of the show. If you haven't seen Brogmire, it's quite raunchy. Um, it's a love letter to baseball, but it's also it's in a very sick kind of alcohol, drug-fueled way. And uh, which you normally don't, you know, it's like normally think of baseball and hot dogs going along uh, uh, together, but uh, we combined it with alcohol and, and drugs. But yeah, it turns <laughs> out that was the only clip of the show in four years we could air. So that's uh, that's what yeah, we just aired. We usually uh, have Joe saying really <laughs> ridiculous stuff. By the way, I'm not like, I love the show so much. And so I take every opportunity to say, if you haven't seen it, which most people haven't, because we're a cult hit, which means we're a great show that nobody watches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Take the Brock Meyer challenge. Watch the first five minutes of the episode one, season one. If you do not laugh, you can stop watching. Oh, and it's I guarantee you will. I, I'm best. uncomfortable self promoting, but I do it for this show because I it's really funny. And I Listen, it. that's why we we're so excited to have you on. Uh, one more thing, and then I'll let D Train jump in. I, so, you know, I had read that you had said the Brock Meyer character was kind of a combo of all 70s baseball announcers, right? So can you just take us through how you envisioned this character and how you came up with the voice? I know, obviously, you're a talented voice actor, but give us a little idea about that. Well, the Brock Meyer voice is this voice right here. It's the voice that I remember listening to in seven, 19, especially 1970s broadcasts. It was like every announcer sounded like this. And uh, I called it the generic baseball announcer voice of the 1970s. And the weird thing is that when I met Bob Costas, he loves the show. And he said, you're doing the generic baseball announcer voice of the 1970s. <laughs> and I said, Bob, that's exactly how I think of it. And uh, that's exactly right. And this voice also, if you go back then, it sold you everything on television, like the Ginsu knife or, uh, you know, uh, Popeil's Kitchen Magician. It was always this guy <laughs> telling you about it. And I always wondered if guys like that sounded like that at home you know like do they come home and go honey what is for dinner tonight i look forward to a spirited session of lovemaking as well so let's get that going <laughs> um, he's like a he's like a method announcer exactly <laughs> so that was basically how we started the brock meyer premise then it was kind of fun to imagine if those guys got really wasted and drunk would they still sound like that and brock meyer does and uh we went from there oh man d train jump in here yeah, you know, Hank, you know, when I think about the show, I think about the jacket. You have to tell me, <laughs> what, how did you come about with that jacket? It's probably one of the cooler jackets. And I already told Wardrobe when we get back to Fox, I need a jacket and the matching pants to go with that. So can you tell me a little bit about that and how you came about it? Well, many announcers still have a flair. Uh, you know, Walt Clyde Frazier in New York. Uh, I'm a huge Mets fan. And when I was growing up, we had Lindsey Nelson, who... Uh, always wore a jacket uh, like that. Uh, the late, great uh, Craig, Craig um, is it Craig Sager? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. He, he would always dress colorfully. 
And uh, so it, it seemed in line with a guy who sounded like this, that he was dressed <laughs> like that. Um, but it mostly it was Lindsey Nelson in my mind. Um, it was kind of a tribute to him as a Mets fan. Swish. That's, well, hey, Hank, I mean, it's so rad having you on the show, bro. I mean, this is so great for all of us, man. We're such huge fans. Now, on the show, you're a commissioner, right? Obviously, with baseball and, and what's not going on right now, if you were the commissioner of baseball, what would you do? I would do what I think they're doing, which is I'd experiment with this season and see what sticks. Um, as much as I love baseball, and I am a baseball purist at heart, this is, I feel like since the steroid era, and I've given this a lot of thought, a lot of records are kind of asterisky anyway. So I say, why not, why not roll the dice a little bit and just look at that as the olden era and update the game? You know, I'm not against double headers, seven inning. I'm not against seven inning games. I'm not against robot ums. I'm not against limiting um, uh, uh, pitchers. Uh, I'd say anything that maybe could be a little more uh, eyeball friendly for our younger viewers who aren't used to paying attention for too long. I say, why not? Give it a try. Maybe it'll be fun. You know, uh, I'm for it. Yeah. And, and, and that could very well happen. I think we'll all just take baseball at this point. All right, Hank, let me ask you this. So you, you brought it up, grew up, you know, a Mets fan in Queens. I saw you. Ooh, I apologize back, for that. Back in the day. I've done so last. <laughs> I apologize for killing your Mets, boy. Ooh, I'm sorry yeah, about no, that. I remember you. I'm sure I screamed horrible things at you many a time. I know I did, in fact. There's certain guys you really hate as Mets fans. <laughs> definitely made that list, my friend. I mean, you're not quite, you know, you're not quite. Uh, Utley level of hate. Oh, yeah. that way. <laughs> but you're you're in there. You're in the close, hall. You're close. in the hall. For well, sure. I appreciate it. You're in yeah. the mix. You know. So so how are the you know how are the Mets going to get back on top, Hank? You know, very very important question. And I know you have the answer to this. Well, you want me to answer seriously or jokingly? <laughs> Probably jokingly is best for all of us. <laughs> I'll get into it. <laughs> um. How are the Mets get? Look, let, let's let's be positive, shall we? Okay. Well, they got go. a core of very exciting young players yes. that are really are. I mean, last season was frustrating, as many Mets seasons are, <laughs> but it was an, it was an exciting one. It was a fun one more than most. Not only because of Pete Alonso, but in great part. And uh, you know, for a Met fan to say that um, you know, they have a definite chance of. Uh, of getting back to uh, uh, really competitive, you know, that's that's about as much as a Met fan will give you. That's like a hugely optimistic thing for a Met fan to say. Well, I think uh, I, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be uh, as as well as you can put it. And uh, listen, Kevin, I know you know better than I. You're the one who had to sit every season. <laughs> yeah, you were there. <laughs> listen, I mean, even I, I could at least tape it and fast forward and go, "Oh my God, look at this," and just like fast forward, you know. You couldn't you know, fast I used forward to make, anything, man. I, I really used to make fan, make fun of fan, Mets fans. It's like, you know you guys are going to mess this game up, right? And they say, don't say that, DJ. And I said, you know, it's going to turn around to 7 or 8. Anyway. So you guys might want to get to your cars early and just listen to the radio. But enjoy that pain and misery. Hey. But I love Mets fans. I you learn to be, Hank, you learn to be positive <laughs> after all. As you know, you learn to be positive after all but those You years. guys do. I, I feel like I'm more the 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 prototype Met fan, I, I see gloom and doom, not just with the Mets, but now with everything. It's colored my whole view of life. <laughs> He's like, take it over, bro. I'm not kidding at all. Like, I, it bit, like in show business, like, I, you know, I'm like, oh, well, that's it. When This project's never going to go. I'm like, why are you so negative? I'm like, because I'm a Mets fan. That's why. <laughs> I've been trained. Well, the uh, the series we could talk to you all day, but I know we're going to let you go. The series finale of Brock Myers Wednesday, ten o'clock Eastern on IFC. Uh, Hank, we love the show. We really appreciate it. You man. can binge uh, the first three seasons on Hulu. I must point that out. Please, that's all great. Right. Good news, Hank Azaria. You're on it, man. Thank you, Hank. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, Hank. Be yes, well sir. and be, be safe very, very in this crazy time, Hank. I'll leave you with. Can I leave you with one Brock Meyer uh, observation? Please. Yes. When we do start, please God, when we do start baseball up again. They're going to have to make sure things are safe. That means Yankee pitchers are going to need to properly disinfect every baseball by throw, throwing them at the Astros. So <laughs> I just want to offer that. I mean, uh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. The best. Classic. Thanks, Hank. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We got more to do on Safe at Home. We come back. A little anniversary of Ricky Henderson. We'll relive it. You know, Don Trell grew up in the Bay Area. He might have something to say about that.